Hello everyone, my name is Tim Miskell, a Solution Architect as part of the Network and Edge Platform Division at Intel. Joining me today will be Larry Wang, also from NEPD at Intel, along with Manish Meehan from AT&T. Together we will be discussing Intel and AT&T's joint initiative regarding performance improvements to OBS port mirroring through hardware offload. The topics for this presentation will include some background context on the use case and challenges related to TAP as a service performance in an OBS environment, our proposal for performance improvements to port mirroring by Nick Harbor offloading, the benchmark data that we have collected showcasing the potential performance gains as part of our RFC, a live demo of the actual RFC so that others may also experiment within their environment, and lastly, a call for action in the hopes of providing grounds for additional discussion amongst the community for potential future directions for port mirroring. Hi, uh, this is Manisha. Hi, I work for at and uh, and, and I'm responsible for working, uh, virtual networking uh, uh, for the network cloud. And uh, uh, one of the use cases that we have for our uh, mobility workloads is uh, monitoring the traffic that flows through it. And uh, we use virtual probes uh, to do that. And, uh, and this virtual probes uh, uh, mirror the control plane as well as uh, some of the user plane traffic. And uh, we leverage both SRRV as and OVSDBK to le uh, to um, monitor this traffic. Here we in this topic we are trying to address the OVS mirroring. Uh, with the OVS mirroring, uh, when it's done in software, has a very high cost. Uh, uh, we lose 70% of our capacity. That's one issue, and uh, the other issue is like east-west traffic uh, can only be done in software with a in order to offload it, we need to make some modifications, and, and the, those are the modifications we're going to present today, and there will be a demo for, for that. And one other issue with the OVS mirroring is that on, that uh, in OVS, we couldn't ship the packets to another uh, central location, uh, whereas in the V-router kind of uh, situation, we can add a header, and it can go to and send the mirrored packet to a uh, remote destination. So um, the use case, right, uh, the high-level uh, um, setup for our, uh, our uh, VNFs uh, is like this. Uh, we use SRIV mirroring uh, for some of the workload that use user plane. User plane traffic goes to SRIV, and we use VF to VF mirroring. Uh, we worked with Intel, and there's a uh, of tree driver that's available on Salesforce that uh, we can leverage with the VFD feature and configure the mirroring through SysFS. And, uh, but for OVS, uh, we didn't have a very uh, optimized solution, so we worked with Intel, and there are some patches to both OVS uh, as well as to the DPDK. Uh, and uh, leveraging that, we can reduce uh, the impacts on the mirroring and that provides us the better solution uh, to meet our needs in the telco workspace. Uh, this is Ning Ming Wang from Intel. In this slide, uh, let's take a deep dive into how obvious DPDK port mirroring is implemented and the change made by this work. On the left-hand side of this slide uh, presents the uh, data path for port mirroring. The source traffic is a package stream traveling from VNIC1 in VM1 to VNIC2 in VM2. This traffic is captured and mirrored to VM3 where a VNF, VPro, as noted, receives the mirror traffic. The right-hand side of the slide uh, represents how data in VM1 is captured and copied to the host, and the same data is copied to VM2 through the uh, vhost braille sharing. The blue dot line in the figure uh, shows how mirror traffic is delivered to VM3. In this case, we show two implementations for this transaction. Uh, the default implementation uses the same vhost per I.O. data copy, and our implementation uses an SIO device for vprobe instead of per I.O. So there is no packet copy for our implementation. Instead, Packets are sent to VPro through a NIC device mirroring feature, which however uploads packet copy from one PCI function 
this PCI function could be a, a PF function or a VF function to another PCIe function. In this slide, we show how OVS DPDK port mirroring can be done through NIC hardware uploading. In this diagram, there's a network service function on the left-hand side that produces the network traffic of interest. On the right-hand side of the diagram, there's a network monitor function that is the destination of the mirror traffic. In the middle, there are two boxes, an OVS controller and a host network interface. Together, they control two data passes. The OVS controller manages how the traffic is captured and the host network interface, which is a PF driver, configures and enable device function mirroring. In this slide, we show our design in terms of updates to various OVS components. On the right-hand side is the control flow of various OVS controllers implemented by OVS switch daemon. We tap into the uh, mirror configuration in the OVS controller to extract parameters for mirror uploading setup. The capture mirror uploading requests are then in queue as shown in the middle diagram, which then is scanned by an independent NetDev mirror upload thread. This thread works like a default procedure call, which goes to sleep if there's no request. When there is a request, the thread converts the mirror upload configuration parameters to a data structure and send it through a new NetDev DBDK class interface call. This call then register an RX TX callback function for a vhost PMD or a vhost user client or uh, server device. Once the callback is registered, the ingress or egress traffic is transported through the mirror channel, which triggers an internal device mirroring that results in mirrors mirroring of the same traffic on a pre-configured device function. Specifically, in this case, is a SIOV function. In this slide, we show the changes that we made on the OVS VS control mirror schema to illustrate how the mirror uploading configuration is done. We add the following six uh, uh, mirror configuration parameters. Mirror upload is a pooling variable that can be used to enable mirror uploading. And the flow DSD address is uh, to allow refinement of traffic to be mirror. We use the L2 MAC address for this uh, purpose. The next parameter, bound port other, is to allow the user to choose either the active or the standby port for configuration that use bounding. And if the bounding port is select for this uh, mirror channel. The output port name enable mirroring to ports on bridge other than the traffic source bridge. The last two parameters, output source VLAN and output destination VLAN, are used to specify the mirror traffic tag for ingress and egress traffic. We use these two parameters so we can add the VLAN tag on the mirror traffic to separate the mirror traffic from the original traffic. And the Parameter square above don't include mirror device function setup. In our work, uh, we use a PF driver feature called VFD to configure device function mirroring. In this slide, we show how different OBS NetDev DBDK ports are configured for port mirroring. For source traffic ports, that's uh, uh, either a vhost user client or vhost uh, user servo or a vhost PMD. There is no change required compared to the default mirror configuration. Uh, for the scenario that where a DPDK port is used for the mirror channel, we add an additional uh, option called TX underscore VLAN underscore insert to allow the port to enable VLAN insertion when traffic is mirror. In this slide, we showcase three uh, examples on how to configure mirror uploading parameters through OVS VS control. The highlighted syntax token are added to configure extra parameters needed for uh, mirror uploading. The syntax for removing a mirror 
of loading configuration is the same as the default mirror uh, setting. So user could use the same mirror configuration command to list or inspect the mirror of loading configuration. I now pass the presentation to Tim to discuss the performance benchmark. Hello again, my name is Tim Misko, and in the next two slides, we'll be presenting an overview of the topology used as part of our performance benchmarking. As part of the default mirroring test setup, we make use of a traffic generator hosted on a separate server, in this case, PackageGen. We run the DPTK L2 forward application as our VNF, along with TestBND for our type as a service. Note that we primarily run TestBND on our vPro VM in order to verify that the throughput matches the ingress or egress throughput as seen by the Duff VM. We run the performance benchmarks on Intel Ethernet Controller 700 Series 25 gig NICs, and we enable mirroring using the default mechanisms provided by OVS to mirror packets from VNIC 1 attached to port 0 on the Duff VNF to VNIC 3 attached to port 0 on the vPro VM. Note that the yellow dotted lines illustrate the original traffic flow, while the orange dotted lines illustrate the mirror traffic flow. Also note that our configuration includes an active backup bond between the VFs for a more realistic scenario, with VF0 serving as the active port and VF1 serving as the backup port. This setup can certainly be simplified further by removing the bond. The following slide presents our test setup in the case where we benchmark enabling hardware offload as part of our RFC. The setup is identical to the previous slide with the following notable exceptions. We create two additional virtual functions, shown in orange, one for each virtual function, part of the original active backup bonding configuration. Both of these new virtual functions are attached to our vPro VM. We mirror packets from VNIC1 attached to port 0 on the dot VNF to VF1, the standby port attached to our OBS bridge. In addition to this, we also enable VLAN mirroring through our hardware offload mechanism VFD to mirror packets from VF1 from our OBS bridge to VF3 attached to the vPro VM. Moving now to the performance data captured as part of this benchmark, we ran four different test case scenarios, specifically ingress mirroring, egress mirroring, perflow ingress mirroring, and perflow egress mirroring. The following slide presents the OBS Master DPDK1911 MRR L24 single Q RX and TX throughput data, respectively for the ingress and egress mirroring test cases. In the case of the light group bar on the left, it represents the baseline case where mirroring is disabled. For the dark gray bar in the middle, it represents the case where mirroring is enabled using the default OBS mechanisms. And the gray bar on the right represents the case where mirroring is enabled using NIC hardware offloading. As previously mentioned, the performance degradation to the dot VNF when default mirroring is enabled reaches approximately 70%, particularly in the case of 64 byte packets. We observe a performance improvement up to 168% when mirroring via NIC hardware offload is enabled. The following slide presents the MRR RX and TX throughput respectively for perflow ingress and perflow egress mirroring, specifically with 100% matching flows sent to the l 24vnf in the interest of a more apples to apples comparison with the data collected for port ingress and port egress mirroring. The test results shown above are almost identical to the ones shown on the previous slide, particularly given that the destination MAC address for each packet sent by a traffic generator matches the .vnf. As before, we observe up to 70% performance degradation to the .vnf which improves up to 163% when mirroring via NIC hardware offload is enabled. We've now reached the live portion of the presentation where we will demonstrate performance in three cases, namely baseline RX super performance of the WNF with mirroring disabled, RX super performance of the WNF when ingress port mirroring is enabled using the default OBS mechanisms, RX super performance of the WNF when ingress port mirroring is enabled via NIC hardware offloading. Note that in all cases, we send 64 byte packets. To begin with, we'll start OVS DPDK, we'll set up our bridge ports and flows, and then we'll start our VMs. As mentioned, we'll be running OVS Master with DPDK 1911.5, which includes our changes for OVS port mirroring hardware offload. We will set up a single bridge, which has a single virtual function attached to it, and three VNIC ports. We will set up simple flow table rules to allow bidirectional traffic. And we'll be starting two VMs. One VM will be our DOT, which will host L2 forward. And the other VM will be our VPROBE, where we will mirror packets to. OK, OBS DPDK is started. We have the flow table rules in place. Our DUT VM is started, and our VPRO VM is started. 
Okay, at this point we are logged into our .vm on the left hand side and also our repro VM on the right hand side. We have L2 forward running on our .vm and we have testbnd running on our vpro VM. At this point we'll go ahead and start traffic flow. And as mentioned for the first case, this is our baseline case, in which case we do not have Miri enabled. So at this point, we're sending 64 byte packets and we're measuring the throughput as reported on our L24 VM. Here we can see that we have about 6.4, almost 6.5 million packets per second on the L24 VM. And then if we check the throughput on our VPR VM, it reports zero as expected. For the second part of the live demonstration, we now have the ingress port mirroring enabled using the default OVS mechanism. We'll go ahead and start sending traffic as once before. In this case, is before sending 64 byte packets. Once again, we'll measure the throughput as reported by L2 forward, as well as testbnd running on our VPROBE. We can see in this case that the throughput has dropped from 6.4 down to approximately 1.8 million packets per second. And to confirm, we can see that on VPROBE, there's approximately 1.7 to 1.8 million packets per second. For the last part of the demonstration, we now have ingress mirroring enabled using the NIC Harbor offloading technique we presented earlier. As before, we'll go ahead and send traffic from our traffic generator, consisting of 64 byte packets. We'll measure the RX throughput as reported by L2 forward, and also the RX throughput as reported by TestVMD. We can see in this case that the throughput on the L2 forward VM is approximately 4.8 million packets per second, an increase from approximately 1.8 million packets per second that we saw when using the default mirror mechanism. And to confirm, we see approximately the same amount on our VPRO VM. This concludes the demonstration. Call for action. The action, uh, the first action would that call for uh, community attention is to try this uh, IVC that we have been uploaded to the uh, mail server for a couple of months. I would like to seek in the feedback from the community and make the improvement so we can upstream a new one for everyone to try it out. The second uh, action I would like to call for uh, community attention is about device uh, mirroring configuration uh, in the uh, strategy. That in, in this uh, slide, I present three options. The first two options is when we consider this uh, uh, device configuration need to be done inside OBS. And the last one is that if we don't believe that's necessary, we can leave the administration to do whatever to configure this uh, device configuration. So the first approach, uh, so there's two scenario. One is the, uh, the DBDK port is, in, is using the uh, PF driver. And second case is that the DBDK port is done through this uh, SRB driver. So in the first approach, I believe the uh, DBDK community already had proposal to add the uh, device mirroring uh, through RTE flow. So uh, I don't foresee any challenge here. But for the uh, scenario where SIRV is used, then we need to provide an interface allow the kernel driver to do this uh, device configuration. So in this particular uh, uh, approach, I would like to uh, call for community, in particular OS vendor, to help us to, uh, to come out a a way that you know that that would uh, satisfy all the uh, kernel driver. So the last action I would like call for community attention is that thinking about other way to reduce the data copy for the host. One uh, approach is the DMA CPU overloading, which can reduce the uh, uh, CPU overhead. Thank you to everyone for your time. We will now conclude this presentation for OBS port mirroring and allow time for questions, thoughts, and comments. Please also feel free to reach out for more information about the work that was presented today.